Hey, what's up guys? Jake the Asshole here, and today I will be paying tribute to NASA's 50th year anniversary of faking the moon landings. Today I'm going to be reacting to a video called Space Experts React to the Apollo 11 Moon Landings. So this is going to be a reaction to a reaction video. Hopefully you get some satisfaction, you know? Alright, let's go! You know, it's one of the inspirations for me going into science. So you sort of have to go, wow, this actually happened. Picking up the stuff. That's <laughs> one small step for man. I'm Sarah Russell, and I'm a research scientist at the Natural History Museum, looking at the formation and evolution of the solar system and the evolution of the moon. My name is Marissa Lowe, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Manchester, and I look at volcanoes on the moon. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm a conspiracy expert. I work at YouTube exposing NASA's bullshit. I'm Wally Funk, and I'm part of the Mercury 13 testes from back in the 60s, I was being processed to see how girls could pass to be into space. Wait, let me get this straight. You were being processed to see how girls could pass to be into space? Is that what you said? I was being processed to see how girls could pass to be into space. Oh, okay, well that makes perfect sense. Please, Mrs. Funk, tell us about how you were processed. NASA said you're doing great, you've passed all the tests, but we can't take you because you don't have an engineering degree. So even though you need an engineering degree, apparently, to join the NASA team, and you did not have an engineering degree, yet you chose to go along and do all the testing in order to join the NASA team so that you could then have no chance of being chosen at the end once they discovered you did not have the proper prerequisite. That makes perfect sense, Mrs. Funk. Please continue. I do remember seeing the liftoff and the going around in the, earth, in the atmosphere and the landing, I would think it was fantastic. The Apollo 11 landing, I was two years old, so I'm not sure that I remember it. The moon landings took place, I wasn't born. Wow, that's a pretty impressive batch of space experts there, don't you think? You got an old lady who saw the moon landings on a black and white television screen. And then you got another lady who works in a museum who says she was two years old and maybe remembers the moon landings. And then you have a student at a university who was not alive yet during the moon landings. Man, I can't think of a better batch of space experts to have watch the moon landings than these women right here. <laughs> We're going to have a look at uh, a film of the highlights of the Apollo 11 landing. He's being told what to do when you're coming down for a landing. It's just like when I'm coming in for an airplane landing. You can see they're just sort of landing onto an area with absolutely no craters. Okay, I can't say whether it's intentional or not, but Homegirl is definitely throwing up some double 666 symbols. Again, can't prove whether it's intentional, but it is worth noting. See, they're just sort of landing into an area with absolutely no craters. You can see the dust starting to come up now, so it's actually really hard to see anything on the surface. Wait, wait, wait. What did you just say about dust? See the dust starting to come up now, so it's actually really hard to see anything on the surface. So her exact words were, the dust is starting to come up now, so it's actually really hard to see anything on the surface. So as you can imagine, a lunar module weighing about 10,000 pounds should have ejected a whole lot of moon dust when it landed, and it definitely should have left a pretty big blast crater as it landed. And the so-called space expert, while watching the video, claims she saw dust and that hardly anything could be seen on the surface because of the dust. So how come when we look at all the NASA photos, 
All the photos of the lunar module are perfectly clean. There's no dust that settled anywhere on the lunar module at all. In fact, you can even zoom in on the boots of the lunar module and see for yourself there's not a speck of dust that settled on the boots of the lunar module. So if she saw dust on the video, and if you can imagine a 10,000 pound lunar module should most definitely eject some dust when it lands and leave a blast crater, you have to ask yourself when you look at the pictures, where is the dust? Where is the blast crater? It simply doesn't exist. Hmm. And what's even more strange is astronauts who weigh a whole lot less than lunar modules, they seem to make perfect footprints when they walk around on the moon, yet the modules don't leave any boot prints or blast craters. Huh. I wonder what the NASA fanboy's answer is to that one. The eagle has landed. The eagle's Rocket landed. Classic line, the eagle has landed. We copy you on the ground. <laughs> Amazing. Must be such an emotional moment. It's just an, uh, incredible. It's an radio jack. Touchdown! Woo! Yeah! USA! 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 Yay! Woo! Very, very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. So this is really interesting. Brown He's man. describing what the surface uh, is like here. Much. So this would have been the first time that someone had seen what the lunar regolith is like. So the lunar regolith is like the soil that's on top of the surface of the moon. And it actually turned out to be super powdery. And actually the powder got everywhere, got all over their suits. Yeah, that's the second time you've brought up dust, but in all the Apollo 11 photos I go back and look at, the lunar module is clean, there's no dust on it at all, and all the astronauts seem to be wearing nice, clean, white spacesuits. So can you please point to the dust that got everywhere? Because I see a clean, white astronaut suit and a clean lunar module boot in the same picture. They've got the flag up now, and you can flag see the stars and stripes uh, on the lunar surface. Up now. Yeah. <laughs> I know when they left, the flag actually fell down. 40 feet out, I'd be main pace, my feet. Now they're just experimenting of different ways to walk around the moon. But this may be a function of the suit. I know they tried, they experimented with jumping around and walking around. And by experiment, you mean attach the astronauts to wires and shoot the whole thing in a studio, right? I mean, look at the astronaut here on the ground. Is he fighting moon gravity or is he attached to wires? You be the judge. Okay, so they're collecting a core tube sample. So we do this for a lot of rocks and actually glaciers on earth as say ice or rocks are deposited and formed over time that's recording a history as you're going deeper into the ground so these cores are giving us more information than we could just get at the surface and we're still studying these rocks now 50 years later we're still uh, working on them uh, they're i guess lifting off yep amazing Wow, thank you. How does That's it really feel, good. How does it feel to watch it? It actually feels really emotional because I actually am not sure that I have seen that. I haven't seen that for decades, to be honest. I can't imagine what it must have been like to watch this live. What I remember really struck me was the adults all seemed so excited about it. I honestly didn't know that adults were capable of having that emotion. Well, I personally thought it was the stupidest bullshit I've ever seen. It was fake as hell and it sucked balls. I would rather chop my own dick off than have to watch that again. There's no comparison. They were going into space by, v by rocketry. They were just kind of ahead of their time, but they were doing what they needed to do to get into space and to get to the moon. I knew all the tests that those guys had to go through because I beat them on many, many of the tests, the physical and the mental tests. Even. You can't jump from there to the Apollo. You have to learn to fly. You have to learn to fly jets. 
and you have to understand how the gravity works. So you just don't jump in there and go up there. Getting to watch a live moon landing would be amazing. I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't for Apollo, but I don't know that I'd be a research scientist. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. And this has been just another opinion from Jake the Asshole. Please like, share, and subscribe. But before you go, make sure to arm yourself with the best damn shirt you could possibly wear. With the coolest hoodie you could ever slip over your dome. This design has been tested and is guaranteed to blow minds and wake people up as you walk down the street. Do not cheat yourself out of wearing the best possible clothing design ever designed in the history of the world. It is available on teespring.com and in the link in the description and on the link on the screen. Order now!